If you want to use a traditional mouse for the Transformer Prime, you can do so. It plugs into the USB keyboard dock, and it doesn't require any drivers. Once it's plugged in, you can use the left mouse button to execute commands. You can use the right mouse button for context or back button. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down. And on some applications, you can even use the front and back button if the mouse has it. If you want to customize any of these settings, you can go to the Asus Customize Settings in Settings and then change the mouse commands to uh, a couple of different options, although they are limited. There are many different home launchers available for the Android operating system. Other than the default launcher, in this uh, demonstration I'm showing you currently the Go Launcher HD, but if I wanted to change that, I would go to the Settings, go to Applications, Find the launcher I'm currently using and then clear defaults. When I next press the home screen, it will then give me an option to choose a new launcher. And I can keep choosing a new launcher until I click the use by default and then select that launcher and then it will stay using that launcher until I again decide to clear the defaults. While your Asus Transformer Prime is plugged into the keyboard dock, it will always use a battery from the keyboard dock and then transfer power to the tablet when it can do. As you can see in this demonstration, I have run out of keyboard um, power. So what I can do is unplug the tablet and plug the keyboard dock into the mains and even though the tablet's not plugged into the keyboard dock, it will still charge the keyboard dock and I can carry on using the tablet. This is useful if you want to leave the keyboard dock at home to charge while you take your tablet away on your travels. Like any other Android device, the Asus Transformer Prime has a notification slash status control panel on the bottom right of the tablet. If you press there, you will bring up a series of notifications. What you can do is on the options on the right here, you can swipe across and even use extra options such as muting the tablet. The notifications here in the bottom right can be crossed off altogether using the cross on the bottom right hand corner or swiped off individually as shown here. Notifications may change as you add more and more applications to your device. One of the great things about the Android operating system are widgets, and some of them are resizable. The way to do this is to long press on the widget. If a border appears around the widget, like here, you can resize it to a bigger size if you wish. Some widgets can even grow bigger than the actual content they contain, like bookmarks here, to prepare it for more bookmarks in the future. Some widgets, however, you cannot resize, like this YouTube widget here, which cannot be resized, but it can be moved. Some custom launchers, however, will let you resize any widget to any size you want. In the Android world, long press is your friend. On the home screen, it allows you to customize many things. For example, long press on an icon and it will allow you to move around any of the home screen, even move it to another screen on your home screen. The alternative thing to do is to long press, which will launch wallpapers, at least on the home launcher. It does other options on other launchers. So give it a try, see what you can do. One of the great advantages of the Asus Transformer Prime is that it can accept many different media devices. In this example, I'm going to plug a micro SD card straight into the tablet while it's switched on. This will trigger a notification in the bottom right hand corner and I can view files on my device by pressing on the folder icon. Remember to always be safe when you're removing a device and use the remove icon from the notifications to make sure you don't lose any data when you take out your memory device. Tablet not working properly? Yeah, I just switch it off and switch it back on again. And I'm actually being serious here. With the Transformer Prime you can hold the power button and the volume down button down for about 10 seconds when you're turning on the tablet and text will appear in the top left hand corner. This is a called reboot of your Transformer Prime and it should clear out any messy data or issues you might be having with your Prime. It won't fix all your problems if you've got something major going on and make sure you don't select wipe data when the Transformer Prime is booting up. The Asus Transformer Prime has a keyboard dock with one USB port which is excellent but it is only one USB port. So here, I'm plugging in a four-way USB hub and then plugging a memory stick and a mouse into the USB hub to turn it into what you might call a mini laptop. Just be careful though, because the USB hub can't power things like external hard drives, which you would, as usual, have to plug into the Asus Transformer Prime directly. Plugging your Asus Transformer Prime into a television is incredibly easy. All you need is a micro HDMI cable, 
plug it into your tablet and it will literally do the rest. It turns on without any issues. Once you have done this, you will see a new option in the settings, which is HDMI. And then you can go to screen display and even crop your screen so the status bar is either removed or remains on screen. Viruses are everywhere today, even on your smartphone or tablet. So it's best to play it safe and download a virus protector such as AVG, which is free from the Google Marketplace. It will scan all your applications and make sure they are free from viruses. And it also includes other tools to make sure that your tablet is fully protected. There are two reasons why I recommend AVG. First of all, it's free and it does scan any application you download before it installs properly onto your tablet. You may have noticed that if the Asus Transformer Prime tablet locks, you can not unlock it by pressing the keys on the keyboard dock. Well, actually, you can. You just need to turn the setting on by going to Settings, Asus Customize Settings, scrolling to the bottom, and then turning off the Mobile Dock Battery Saving Mode. That will mean that when you press the keys on the keyboard dock, it will magically make your tablet turn on and unlock. Be aware, of course, that this will drain battery life as you use it. Your Asus Transformer Prime will need to smile for this one because it's about to be caught on camera. Your keyboard dock has a specialised button for taking pictures, as shown here. However, if you don't have access to a keyboard dock, you can press the power button and volume down button at the same time for about a second to again initiate a tablet screenshot, as demonstrated here. Tablets are all about speed and efficiency, so how do you get from one application to another as quickly as possible? Well, the first thing to do is put your applications in folders so they're easily accessible. The second is to use Go Launcher HD, which has a dock at the bottom of the home screen so that you can put your favourite applications there and it will stay there no matter what home screen you're on. Don't forget that button in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen either. It's a quick and easy way to look through your recent applications and go through them. Finally, try this. It's called Swipe Pad and it enables you to swipe your finger from off the screen onto the screen and launch a mini applications launcher. You can set up any applications you want or favourites and it's absolutely perfect. The Asus Transformer family has an IPS display which means in-plane switching, I think anyway. The Transformer Prime and Infinity actually have IPS Plus displays. As demonstrated here, you can turn it on and put it up to the highest brightness and you can even use it outdoors. However, what I tend to do is turn on the IPS Plus display and leave it on its bottom brightness setting and it works indoors and saves a bit of battery. Don't bother using the auto brightness button though. It is far too erratic and changes brightness far too often in low light to be useful. Here is how to get a Bluetooth mouse working on your Asus Transformer Prime to free up the USB slot. Go to settings and turn on Bluetooth. Then you will need to turn on your roaming on your Bluetooth mouse. Then press search devices on your Asus Transformer Prime and hopefully it will pick up the Bluetooth mouse. When the Transformer Prime detects a mouse, press on it and that should bring up the option to type in a passcode. It's usually four zeros for the device. Once that's successfully done, the two devices should now be paired together and you can press on the mouse once again to actually connect the two devices. From there on, the Transformer Prime should say that it's connected and you can start using your Bluetooth mouse as if it was a normal mouse. Every time you turn on a mouse in the future, and the Bluetooth is on on the Transformer Prime, they should automatically connect to each other so you can use the two devices. Here are two scrollable widgets. The first is Appy News Geek, which works on any launcher. The second is Colorize, which will not work on the default home launcher because it doesn't have scrollable widget support. Many applications that you download from the Google Play Marketplace require scrollable API. Launchers such as ADW and Go Launcher will work absolutely fine. As you can see in this demonstration, I'm now using Go Launcher HD and again using Colorize. And as you can see, I can use a Facebook and Twitter timeline to show you scrollable widgets. Keyboard layout can change from country to country. And because the Asus Transformer Prime has a fixed keyboard, 
Sometimes the mappings aren't quite correct. But there is a simple solution to this. In the bottom right hand corner, when you start typing, a keyboard symbol appears. If you press that, you can change your keyboard layout. Here, I'm changing it to Asus English UK Keyboard, which should mean that now my keyboard is correctly mapped and I can use the correct symbols. Of course, when you detach your keyboard from the tablet, you may need to use an on-screen keyboard. In that case, again, you can press the symbol and change it to a keyboard of your choice. One of the features not included on the Asus Transformer Prime is 3G connectivity. So how do you get to use the internet when you don't have access to a Wi-Fi source? Well, the chances are you do with your mobile phone. And here's how you can connect your phone to your tablet. For people with an Android phone, they can go to More Options on Wireless and Networks and then choose a Tethering and Portable Hotspots option. Then you will need to configure your Wi-Fi hotspot by giving it a name and a password. Then turn on your portable Wi-Fi hotspot. What this will do is indicate in the top left hand corner with a blue symbol that you are now available for tethering and hotspots. Now that your phone is broadcasting, your Asus Transformer Prime should pick up the Wi-Fi source like any other. All you need to do is connect to it with the password and voila, you are now connected to your mobile phone and using the data off its 3G tariff. Bear in mind that the speed will only be as fast as the mobile phone, so it can be a bit patchy and this could potentially cost you a lot of money if internet tethering is not supported by your contract. So this is a disclaimer, please check before you try and do this as it may end up costing you a lot of money. And remember, when you've finished, make sure you turn off the portable Wi-Fi hotspot for two big reasons. The first being that it's a huge battery drain on your mobile phone. And the second reason being that the Asus Transformer Prime will burn through data a lot quicker than your mobile phone. Finding tablet optimized applications for Android devices can be a little bit of a chore. So here are a few tips. The first and most obvious is Staff Picks for Tablets button in Google Play, which will give you a rather random collection of applications. The second alternative is to type in for tablet in the search address bar on Google Play. Again, that will find a lot of applications with the word tablet in. The third and final option is to actually use an application designed for sniffing out tablet applications. Tablet Market, for example, is an application whereby you can search through a few categories to find applications which should be tablet optimized. Once you press on the application, it will then take you to the actual Google Play application page where you can download the application. All options are a bit hit and miss, but it's better than just randomly roaming through Google Play to try and find applications.